Hello YouTube, it's your girl Kimberly and in this video I'm going to tell you how to plan your first international trip. So I got my list, I'm checking it twice, I'm telling you all the things that you need to do in order to make that trip happen. So if it's your first international trip or if you just want some better strategies because the last one didn't work out how you wanted, this is what you need to do. Okay, so make sure you hit the like button, also hit the subscribe button, that way you won't miss out on any of the great videos that I make here on my channel. All right, so let's get started. So planning your international trip, first thing that you need to do is save your money, set your budget. So save your money, you know, depends. It ain't tricking if you got it, but you know, get your coins in order in order to plan for your trip. So what I mean by that is I'm, you need to create two budgets or categories of things that you're gonna have to pay for, okay? So there's the how do I get there and where do I stay kind of budget side of the trip. And then on the other side of the trip, it's what I'm doing during the trip, what's happening on the trip, and the money that I'm gonna spend while I'm there. So those are kind of your two buckets. So for some people, um, you know, I want a luxurious, place and I want to fly first class and when I get there I'm just going to walk the streets and do what everyday people do and I don't want to do a lot of things. For other people it's I'm going to get there as cheaply as possible and stay at a budget place because I'm going for a music festival and I'm going to be there the whole time and we literally just sleeping at the hotel and we're going to be out and about so I want to spend my while I'm on the trip money on a VIP ticket for insert festival here right so um not to say that it has to be a festival but just using it as an example so definitely have those two frame of minds for your different budgets and for your plan um so that way you can create your trip also another thing in terms of planning how you're going to get there where you're going to stay where is everybody coming from are people coming from different airports um different situations of flying if the trip is in mexico that flight is going to be kind of different for somebody from new york versus somebody who's flying from southern california so trying to align so that way people get there around the same time and organizing those logistics that is also going to be really key to your planning so um try to work that out in advance in terms of getting similar flights for people trying to connect at certain places based on layovers and stuff so you're definitely going to want to also plan that as a part of your budget too all right, next, do your research. There are so many people that have videos on the internet that are like, oh, this place was so horrible because there was all this tropicalness and it was raining. Like what, it was raining in the rainforest? That's crazy. Like girl, what did you think was gonna happen? So <laughs> you have to do your research, starting with YouTube. I understand that some people are more, um, if you, so it depends how your learning style is, but for, often for a lot of people watching YouTube videos and seeing the places they go, seeing the room, seeing the amenities, seeing the place is easier for them to understand what that experience could be like compared to reading a blog or reading an article. So that is why I say start with YouTube. You don't have to. Definitely check out backpacker blogs. Backpacker blogs have so much great information, especially if you wanna go off the beaten path, but in a safe way. That is another resource you really wanna use. Um, another thing you need to research, money and electrical plugs. Every country is different. Um, transferring your money tip is a dollar strong or is a euro strong? Whoever is the best situation, put your money in that money and then transfer when you get there or contact your bank in advance and get the money in your country before you leave. All that stuff you need to negotiate. You need to research, you need to find out what it is. There are some countries that are dollar fied and they take the American dollar, but then you get a worse price if you have dollars versus their money. So you need to research all of that. Also with the electrical outlets, you don't wanna get there and your phone can't go in the wall. If you're in America going to Europe or certain parts of the Caribbean um, or Asia, you definitely need to make sure your device is gonna plug in the wall because you don't want it to be dying. Um, tourist experiences, and off the beaten path experiences. So yes, if you go to Paris, you wanna see the Eiffel Tower. That's, that has nothing wrong with that. I did it, most people probably do. It's a thing, you'll feel foolish if you tell people you went to Paris and you never saw the Eiffel Tower, you know what I'm saying? So 
definitely include those things in your trip but also look for some experiences that are off the beaten path whether it be a cooking class um what are some other options a cooking class a walking tour a bus tour um a restaurant that is number one rated on yelp that's in the city and not at your resort like try different stuff like that but just make sure you're being safe and research more about it um the state department website is also going to be another resource tool but you should definitely take it with a grain of salt um but it can help you with some information um <laughs> not funny but a country that i wanted to go visit they were having issues with Bl kidnapping and blackmailing like Americans families and I was like is this real so then I did more research and then basically was able to find individual stories of all the people that this happened to on YouTube so I was like oh it is real and maybe I have to make a different plan so definitely check out the State Department website they're not always 100% right but um, it does give you some information um, in terms of safetyness and scams that are going on know the scams um each country people have different things the kids run up to you ask you for money while somebody else is like taking your wallet out your backpack like what are the things that people on the internet are saying you could even search for a lot of places like is this place dangerous does this place have scams and you know take things with a, a grain of salt and use your critical thinking skills but definitely see what people have to say what they're showing you and you know what common sense is that they're like oh I want my diamond chain in the middle of this neighborhood and someone snatched it off my neck like no then that was just a bad plan and I don't know why you did that but um <laughs> for other things it may be something where it's like okay that is something um dangerous that I need to be mindful of and not even just dangerous does the beach have a lot of rip currents is it a scuba diving beach and there's no shore so you can't put a beach chair down like there's things like that that you'll need to know and it's important to do your research so you know that next align with the group if you are traveling with the group you need to find out when what is the date that everybody can pay for things and what is the budget everybody wants to spend if you rush out and get your flight and no one else can get their flight till another time and then that flight's booked up and now they're all on a different flight, will you have a problem with flying alone or do you really want to be with the group the entire time? That's something to think about. Um, another thing you want to align with, how much money do people want to spend? Some people like in total, travel, hotel, food. I'm not spending more than $1,500. I'm not spending more than $2,500. We need to make it work within that budget. Align as a group. Um, so that way nobody gets there and is upset or feels away because they feel like either they're spending too much money, they're spending not enough money, it's just not the vibe they wanted, dot, dot, dot. Um, transportation aligned with the group. Are they uh, we're going to rent a car and we're going to drive group or are they uh, we're going to take cabs group? Um, some countries, you know, they drive on the other side of the road. Does somebody even have experience with that? Um, do they have experience driving? If you only drive on vacation and you don't drive in real life, maybe you're not the person who should be driving. Maybe we should just take cabs. How much do cabs cost? Do we have it in the budget for cabs? You know, those kinds of things. Also, you want to align with the group. Because you want half the group to be, like, going to the rental car counter and the other half is like, I thought we were taking Ubers. So, align with the group on that. Is this a relaxing trip or a activity trip? So some people like to call that difference like the travelers versus the vacationers. So you know vacationers want to relax, they want fun in the sun, they want to feel rejuvenated when they get home. Travelator, travelers want a, travelators, I mean a whole word, travelers want experience, they want to go on tours, they want to do excursions, they want to be all over the place. Or do you want a blend of vacationing and traveling so that's per usually my preference you know a couple days do the excursion go out and about but i also pay for the resort so you know one day i want to be at the resort or if i'm at an airbnb one day i want to spend a little time at the airbnb in the pool all the amenities i want to enjoy it so a uh, mix of both so align with the group what style of trip they want to do um make an itinerary for all the parties you want to go to the places you want to eat do a Google spreadsheet or a Google Doc and just gather it together. Thursday we fly out, we land at lunchtime. 
first dinner at the hotel or the resort um or we go to the grocery store buy food for airbnb like what are the things that's going to happen on the trip make it a shared document for everybody in the group so that way people understand what is happening what's expected and what they should pack and know what they should pack so align with the group that's the so the three tips save money set your budget do your research align with the group those are the three tips so far got two more coming four try to pack everything you need so different products have different formulations in different countries so you want to really try to bring everything you need for your trip with you so for instance a lot of asian body care products have brightening illuminating bleaching ingredients so if you forget your soap in america when you go to buy soap in certain countries a lot of the soap options have bleach in them or some small amount of illuminating thing that can have a negative effect on people with melanin in our skin so you want to bring your soap some countries the toothpaste tastes nasty like bring as many of your things as you can and make sure you're packing within the rules of the liquids and what their country has so for europe it's like 100 milliliters um the u.s the three ounce sizes like you want to know what is what so that way you could bring all the things you need try to bring your clothes bring your chargers yes you can buy all this stuff in other countries but you're off to such a better start if you could just come with everything that you need so try to pack everything yes you're going to forget some stuff um pack a washcloth if you use washcloths a lot of other countries don't have those um, then you end up in the in the convenience store trying to buy a dish rag that you can use as a washcloth. <laughs> Clearly, I know from experience. But um, try to pack everything you need. Just try to pack everything you need. Um, oh, packing list. First thing that's gonna help you pack everything you need is when you have a packing list. Um, make it on your computer. Put it in your phone. Use it for multiple trips. Um, have everything that you need, like do I need socks, shoes, charger, medication, um, my iPad, a backpack, a reusable poncho, whatever, pack in list. Make the packing list so you can follow it for all your trips. And even diversify to be like winter mountain packing list, beach vacation packing list. That way you already have it ready and you won't be trying to like modify it in the moment. Um, carry on versus check bag. If you are carrying on a bag then all your stuff is going to be with you, pack accordingly, try to double up on some things, you know, wear jeans for two days instead of one, carry on. Checked bag. If you are checking a bag, especially on an international trip, you need to make sure that you have a change of clothes, toothbrush, toothpaste, and your chargers and everything, and your medication in your personal item bag. That way, if they lose your check bag, at least when you go to the hotel, you'll have one day's worth of clothes. Plus, you'll have the clothes that you wore when you were traveling, so you could like wash those clothes either through the hotel, if you're at a hotel, or a laundry, or use the laundry machine in the Airbnb. But at least you'll have two pairs of clothes if they lose your bag. Um, if it's like a beach trip, in addition to a pair of clothes, jam a bathing suit in there too. That way you could at least go to the beach, enjoy the pool while you're trying to connect with the people to find your suitcase and get it to you. <laughs> so that is my hack for a check bag. Um, for your personal item bag, make sure you got headphones, charger, anything that you're going to need while you're on the flight. And then like I said, those automatic one day things that if something happens to your bag and it's checked, you'll still be able to survive for two days. Um, the next item on the list, so save your money, set budget, do your research, align with the group, pack everything you need, prep for an emergency. So you want to make sure that you have travel insurance because American or where you're from, health insurance doesn't work everywhere. So travel insurance, that way you can make sure that if there's something wrong, you get sick, you can be seen and that they'll help you. Um, emergency contact. Somebody who you know from back home should know where you're going, who you're going with, how long your trip is, uh, information for other people in the group if they haven't heard from you or to contact you, um, especially if you lose your phone or something while you're on the trip um, and you want to like call from another person's phone, they won't ignore the call thinking it's a stranger, but they'll know that it's your homegirl Sharon and that you calling from her phone because you lost your phone in the ocean. Uh, thank God that hasn't happened to me, but I've seen it. So you know you want to share that information with the family friend or somebody that you can trust 
Um, and then protective phone case. Protective phone case. If you know you're going to be in the mountains hiking and you want to take pictures, you want to side of the waterfall, you want to have some kind of case that your phone is going to be able to survive the trip and the activities. Um, there's a little one where you could drop it in the little pouch and wear it around your neck. You know, just take the pouch off of the pictures. You'll still look cute, but your phone will be waterproof, secure, and safe. So that's a part of being protected because you know you're going to need your phone. You're going to want your phone. Something happens to your phone on the first day of the trip. Now does the trip even count? You don't got no memories. Let me stop and play. <laughs> That is not true, but protect the phone case, phone pouch, waterproof. That way you can uh, enjoy your trip and not have to worry about your phone. All right, so those are my rules for planning your first international trip or really an, any international trip or really any trip in general. I think that these tips are really helpful for when you're trying to plan and get it together. So if you have your own helpful travel tips like um, get to the airport early, these are the best times to fly, buy your ticket on a Tuesday 54 days before you're trying to fly, like any of those kinds of tips, leave them in the comment section below. That way we can help each other and be our little travel community over here. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!